Hello and welcome back to Pyro 5610. My name's Pyro and uh, it's finally nice out. It's like 40, no, it's like 38 degrees out today. Um, so I decided to get out and get a couple videos for you. I've been waiting for something to show you guys for a while. Um, I have, as you can see, I have my plate carrier on today. So that's what kind of this video revolves around is uh, bulletproof armor. And as you know, I like to test bulletproof stuff. I bought this. This setup cost me around, without the mag carriers and everything, it cost me around 400, or no, $300 used. Bought it off a guy uh, who said he paid 400 for it. It has two plates that are three curve level four plates. So you can see here, that's the thickness of them. They're size, or they're uh, size 10 by 12, and they're type four, which means they will stop everything up to and including a 30-06 bullet. So, I wanted to test them, but I'm not going to test $300 plates. So, I decided to get on Wish, and I don't know if you guys have heard of Wish a lot. I'm going to do a separate video on the things that I bought from Wish for the channel, um, including these gloves, which they say mechanics on them. I don't really believe it, but um, I'll go over that in the other video as to why I buy things off Wish. But I've seen things for Bulletproof Armor, so I went ahead and bought... Two of these, uh, I thought it was one, really. I ended up, they sent me two in the package. But you can see the thickness here. Here, I'll do a, I'll try and do a side by side because this one's super heavy. But that, the one on top is the level, it's considered a level 3A. And according to the National Institute of Justice, that can stop up to a 44 mag. Unfortunately, I don't have a 44 mag with me. So we're gonna try everything that I have versus this plate. But you can see the difference there. Um, this one curves down because it's more conforming to your body shape. But for these two plates right here, I paid a total of, I believe it was $42. It was somewhere between $40 and $50. I can't remember exactly how much. But really super cheap for two plates considering uh, level threes usually go for about 100 for two plates. So. I want to know, do they actually stop what they say they'll stop? And I mean, I don't know how well you can hear it on the camera, but they are metal in there. They're covered with some sort of, like there's a foam in there as well. But anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to start off with, as in traditional Pyro 5610 style, we're going to start off with something small. I do have my 22 out here. Um, so I'm gonna be shooting it. It is a rifle, I do understand that, but I really don't think it's gonna penetrate one of these. So let's set these up. I'll start loading up the rifles and the pistols and we'll get to shooting. Here we are. I have my Smith & Wesson m and um, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but there was a recall on every model of these. I think it was every Smith & Wesson m and 15-22. It was manufactured prior to February 2019. There was a problem with the bolt with the firing pin sticking out where if you put it into battery, it could discharge the bullet. I did get the piece, the caliper from Smith & Wesson, and I checked this one, this one's fine. So, to anyone aware of that, this is a safe rifle. And I realized as I'm walking up to here <laughs> that I forgot to shut this red dot off again. I always forget to shut it off. So, hopefully I can hit that strike plate. As you can see, it's just right out there, so I don't think I'll have a problem. I've got four rounds, I'm gonna fire all four into the plate. Okay, so yeah, now you can see the foam foam plate. I honestly don't have much hope for this after seeing that. Because that broke through this, broke through the foam, and it went straight to the plate. But it didn't, no dents or bulges on the back, which is a good thing. So, next in the lineup is the 9mm. Here we have the 9mm Smith & Wesson m &P 2.0. Um, I did just get new night sights for it. They're pretty sweet. I don't know if you can see them on the camera or not, but um, I got those installed by the local gunsmith, and uh, I've got more plans for this gun, but we'll get into that in a later episode. I've got three rounds. I'll probably just fire one at it just to see. Well, the sights are perfect. 
I don't know guys. So that's where it hit. And same thing, I mean it shredded right down to the plate. But the there's I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. There's a bulge right there from the plate. I don't think things are looking too great for this, but we're gonna go with the 38 special next. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had an even bigger bulge on it. You guys know how well I am with this gun, so I have three loaded into it. And I think you guys can still see the plate. I guess I should have checked. Oh yeah, you can still see it. All right, so we're gonna fire one. I'm gonna try and hit that bottom right corner. So about dead center right there, I believe that's, yeah. Cause I have one, two, and then three, and four, but no bulges. That nine really smacked it, but no bulge from the 38 special. So we're gonna step it up a notch, bring out the uh, 1911. Before we do that though, I just remembered, I put this in my pocket and I forgot about it. I bought, for those who don't know, on this channel, I prefer the Hornaday Critical Defense. These were like pink, like um, breast cancer awareness, so they've got a pink center instead of a red center, but it's the Critical Defense for the 38 Special, because I have this as one of the self-defense guns in my house, and I wanted something that wasn't gonna go straight through, it was actually gonna have you know, stopping power, so. This is the critical defense. I'm gonna throw it against that strike plate as well. Oh my gosh. That is a beautiful thing. Let me tell you, I've, as you guys know, I shoot this gun quite a bit because I want to get better with it. That didn't have any kick whatsoever. Like, it was flat, flat shooting. Didn't even recoil, so. Now that it's empty, let's uh, go take a look here. And I believe if, like, I'm thinking that the 38 Special with the critical defense, it's gonna have a better chance of stopping it. Yeah, it hit it right there. I don't know if you can see the, where the heck am I on the camera? There we are. If you can see right down in there in that corner, it actually has like teeth in it like the bullet tip does. But nothing on the back. So now we're gonna move on to the 45. Now as we saw in uh, the bulletproof episode, the nine millimeter did the most damage to the um, pots or the pan lids that are still out here. So, I wonder if it's still gonna be that same way with this. Um, I do have my 45 here, and I don't, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna penetrate nearly, like none of them are gonna dent like that one did. I mean, there's definitely some damage. For sure, that's a new one. And it's smacking them hard. But I don't see, no, no indents. That nine millimeter was the one that had the best chance. But, I mean, for a $35 plate, that's gonna save you. I know some people are against the whole like, Chinese buying stuff. But, I'm pretty impressed with that. But, as you know, we can't test anything on here without destroying it. Well, bulletproof wise, so. I have the 300 back of the truck, we're gonna try that. And after that, I'm gonna put it together, I'm gonna put it in, and I have a feeling it's just gonna shred right through it. But, 
I have the second plate there as well. And I wonder, as we saw with the plate or the pots and pans video, if I stick two of them together, will it stop it? So we're gonna try with one. I have a feeling it's just gonna poop right through it. I have the second plate, like I said, and we're gonna try both of them. And maybe it'll stop it. I don't know. It's gonna be an interesting test. I caught myself because I've done this so many times. It's unbelievable. When you're recording by yourself, you tend to forget to turn the camera on and or off or you shut it off thinking that it was on and here you're turning it on, then it messes up your entire row. I've missed some pretty good camera shots. Uh, one time I destroyed this entire range with my 300 just because I was bored and I missed the entire thing because I got a phone call and when I hung up the phone call, I pressed the record button because I thought it was off and it was on and I missed the entire thing and then it messed up all of it. So literally the last half of my clips were me walking back and forth to the truck when I normally shut the camera off when here I was turning it on. So anyway, I have the plate. It's sitting over here. It's kind of hard to see with the light, so I can't really tell you where the plate's at. Same plate that I've been shooting at. I have um, full metal jackets in my AR here. If I can figure out where the button's at. Full metal jackets right there in the mags. Um, and I haven't shot this gun in a while, so I'm pretty excited about it. Nuh uh. No freaking way. It stopped it. There it is right there. It shredded everything else, but it stopped that 300. Holy crap. I mean, you can see the visible dent right there in the plate, but it stopped a 300 blackout round at close range. Holy crap. I wonder if I can land more than one on it. I just have one left, so I figured I'd just empty it out. Let's go take a look at that plate now. Oh, it is messed up. Well, it's dirty for one, but it's messy. But, my God, I, oh, oh, <laughs> okay, all right, but still. Okay, let me turn you around so you can see what I'm seeing. Or I can see what you're seeing. There it is. It ripped right through that when it was at an off angle. I was gonna say, I didn't even bring out my OT6 because I thought, oh, I'm not gonna need the OT6. But my gosh, that took a punishment. I mean, really, when you think about it, this was 35 bucks off a of Wish. It's just a steel plate, but it took all that and that one finally weakened it enough to shred through it. But I would go as far to say that that will stop one. Cause I hit it like at a low angle. You can see down here, I think that's where I hit it with 45. But I hit it at a low angle and that's when it finally shredded. But good golly Miss Molly, it took a beating. Wow. So there you have it folks. Um, I don't have a 5.56 either. I was gonna have one with Tyler, but the good news is is because this didn't rip through it in the first couple shots, I have a perfectly new one right here. So, if you wanna see me fire through this with something different, um, cause as we all know, bullets, like the nine millimeter did the most damage. It's not the biggest caliber, but it did the most damage cause it's flying at the fly highest velocity of the pistols. Obviously not this, but, <clears throat> 
of the pistols, it went the hardest against all of those. That's why I'd like to try a 44 mag and a 357. Um, I can get a 357 easily. Uh, I'm going to try and get my friend out here with his 44 mag as well. He has both, so I was just going to have him come out, but he was busy today, couldn't come out. So we're going to try next time. Uh, Tyler just got a 5.56 for Christmas, and I'd like to try that. Um, and I'd like to try a couple other bullets of different calibers. If you want me to bring out the Ot 6, let me know. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to see, what you would like to see me put this through. Um, I have the muzzle loader is up and running finally. Um, I fired it during deer season, so I have the 50 cal muzzle loader. I have um, the Ot 6. I was going to try a shotgun on it too, slug or bird shot, doesn't matter to me. I've got, I can get buckshot for the 12 gauge as well. And I have the self-defense rounds for the 410 shockwave. So if you'd like me to see that, um, I can get out the 556. I can get out whatever you guys want to see me put that second plate through. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today's episode. I've been Pyro. Have a wonderful day.